Tonight, we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we broadcast, the Gabi Gabi people, and pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. All right, hello, we're live, everybody. Happy Wednesday, it's date night. Welcome to Wednesday, the 16th of what we're calling September, everybody. And welcome to our fourth conversation in crafting a circular economy. Pretty good set tonight where we're broadcasting from. It's at Brewhaha Brewery in Milani. We have a live audience as well. Let's hear you, everybody. Yes, they've been here since 4.30, so they're charged and ready for a hell of a conversation <laughs> about crafting a circular economy. It's a wonderful initiative from our mates at the Sunshine Coast Council. My name's Todd, and it's a great pleasure for me to take one for the team and to a brewery after brewery, fresh producer after fresh producer, month in, month out, as we bring to you our conversation series of Crafting a Circular Economy. Special guest tonight, everybody. This is Matty J's place. Well, I mean, I've known Matt for a, a while now, it's, uh, but I always get your, your name wrong, but it's Matty J, Matty J, everybody, not from The Bachelor, but from Brewhaha Brewery. We also have Christine Ballinger with us tonight as well. Uh, Christine, the farm manager of the Falls Farm. These guys all work in incredibly together in this majestical hinterland town of Mullaney and surrounds. And also Ryan Hollis from Ever Focus. So it is, it's weird for the first time ever having a live audience. You're still all with us, everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to you online as well. If you've been with us over the last few months, hey, thanks so much for coming back. We'd like to acknowledge our friends, uh, of course, at the Sunshine Coast Business Women's uh, crew, those guys there on their Facebook page. Uh, we'd like you to get on board as well for the uh, Circular Economy Sunshine Coast Facebook page. Just by giving us a like, a thumb, you go on the draw at the end of tonight's broadcast to win $100 to spend here at Brouhaha. How good would that be? 100 bucks? And Toddy will throw in a few extras. Or Matty J will, or, you know, I'll just, you know, say that it was me, and it'll definitely be Matty J. But the guys here will look after you with a $100 voucher. You can be part of the conversation tonight as well on the Brouhaha Brewery Facebook. Uh, we can follow all your comments throughout the next hour, so we'd love to hear from you. Our audience will be asking a few questions later on. We've got a few things to show you, a couple of tricks up our sleeve. And also, we'd like to say we've got a, a very special guest here tonight from, uh, from Spare Harvest, our good friend Helen Andrews, who's in our studio audience, and we'll have a chat to Helen later on. Let's hear it for Helen, everybody! <laughs> All right, so a fair bit to get through. Uh, we'd love you to, to get those questions coming in hard and fast. Crafting a circular economy. You might be sitting there going, what's it all about? What is crafting a circular economy? Who's doing it here on the Sunshine Coast and how can I get involved? We hope to answer all that and more tonight, everybody. First up, though, I'd like to introduce you to our guest, Matty J. Well, really, really, mate, we're your guests. You're the host tonight <laughs> uh, here at Brouhaha. Congratulations on all the success you've had. I've been drinking your beers take another one for the team, uh, for a couple of years now, mate, and this is the first time I've actually been to the brewery. So, well done, mate. This is a fantastic setup. Welcome tonight. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and thanks for everyone for coming along as well. Um, I, I mean, you, you keep saying it's my place, but it, it's definitely not. Um, we're, a, we're a really close team up here, and uh, tonight I'm speaking on behalf of us, but it's, it's much, much bigger than mine. Um, but yeah, we're, we're so proud of what we've achieved and, uh, and where we're placed after four and a half years. It's been a huge journey for you as well, and ever expanding, uh, and you guys are aware so much of what our hinterland means to Sunshine Coast and how you work hand in hand with producers. We'll, we'll get onto that a bit later on tonight. When I think Mullaney, I genuinely, hand of my heart, think Gardner's Falls, which is a ripper, especially when we've had plenty of rain. Uh, I think Mullaney cheese. Clearly, I haven't flattened my own personal COVID curve, but I've devoted entire weekends to cheese over the last six months, everybody. Uh, and I also think brouhaha, which is just amazing. We're going to go through some of your beers a bit later on. But, mate, how does the business model work? What's the business plan? Because in brewing... There is a lot of waste, but you guys are taking care of business with that, aren't you? And this fits in to crafting the circular economy. Yeah, like, I mean, we're, we're definitely more than just a brewery as well. Um, like, I mean, obviously, you can see we are a brewery. Um, and first and foremost, we are a brewery at heart. Um, but as you guys are experiencing tonight, we're a, we're a hell of a lot more than that. So we really pride ourselves on being a restaurant, um, being that local watering hole for the public as well, and then obviously a brewery. So 
We've got lots of limitations up here. Uh, space is one of them. Uh, you can see we're, we're huddled in the brewery tonight and you can see how closely these, these tanks are packed in behind us. Um, so we've been, I had a question earlier from, from Ben um, as asking <laughs> whether we're at capacity. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have been for two years, but uh, we have no plans on changing that. We, we love who we are. Um, and we love that we're that restaurant model. We love that we're that brew pub. And we love having you guys in here, you know, a meter and a half from where we make the beer. So we have no plans to change that. Um, Waste-wise, all of those sorts of things, yeah, look, it's a really simple answer. Um, and, and we just wanna, we love sourcing our ingredients locally. We love seeing our byproducts go locally. Um, and we sort of, we love where we live. So we wanna make sure that we leave it as beautiful as we found it. I it really, for you answer. guys, it's all about community, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it, like, I mean, it keeps coming back to this same thing. We, we don't have any aspirations to take over the world. This is, this is who we are. Um, we built this. We're locals. We built it for locals. Uh, and we love the fact that it's locals that supply our produce. We love that it's locals that then come back and drink the beers in the bar. Um, and we love that people have this real buy-in. Um, and we never saw that any more than we did during COVID. Um, you know, the, the local support and the, the way we could work with the different producers um, and also the different venues that buy our beer. It was just, it really brought it to the forefront um, and we couldn't be more, more humbled um, to, have, to have got through this on the back of the, the local support. It really sort of reiterated what we always hoped it would be, I guess. Well, would you suggest that there's, I don't know, I'm just going to say 600, 700 local breweries now on the Sunshine Coast? Yeah. And there's about 30, though, isn't there, if you throw in the distillers yeah, and yeah, everything? Yeah, yeah, and then um, there's some gypsies on the top, like ones that don't have their own premise. But Yeah, um, of course, and they do the gypsy brewing. Yep. Uh, but, you yep. know, there's, there's your mates in Warana. Yep. Obviously, we're here at Brouhaha yeah. in Mullaney. If you want to go to Noosa, uh, there's the big three there, Heads yep. of Noosa, Boiling Pot and Land and Sea. Uh, Torella Brewing at yep. North Arm, which yep. is just sensational. It's a great venue as well. Uh, Moffs. Yeah. Everyone has About gotten to together, moths. though, bandied yeah. together to try to work out a plan to survive the pandemic, right? Because yeah. COVID-19, it's hit a lot of businesses. Yep. But somehow, our craft breweries and our distillers um, have managed to come out on top because you just made changes really quickly. Yeah, I mean, look... I think they say it, it's, it doesn't matter whether Australia are in a celebration or a recession, they drink. Um, and particularly, they drink beer. So, uh, yeah, look, we, we were obviously one of the more fortunate industries, um, and especially the, the package stuff, that really flew. Uh, we obviously had a huge loss of, of keg sales and bars and restaurants and those sorts of things. Um, but, like I said, we, we were so well supported through this period that we, we were really, really fortunate. Um, and, and so was the industry. Like, we are a really close network of brewers on the Sunshine Coast. We, we catch up every six weeks as a, as a cohort. Um, we take it in turns to host everyone. Uh, and we all come along, we all share ingredients, we share stories, we share equipment. Um, because we see ourselves as competing against the big guys. So craft beer in Australia is still well, 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 well less than 10% of the market share. So, you know, there might be 30 of us on the Sunshine Coast, but we're, you know, a, a tiny little pinprick in the ocean of, of mass-produced beer. So the 30 of us are trying to work together to educate consumers and to steal market share from those big conglomerates. And I reckon that is the key to the survival and the success, certainly in what we're calling Glen 2020. I mean, everyone should be calling it Glen 2020. That's what it is. Is it okay to say that if 2020 was a cake, it'd be a urinal cake? Some of us have really struggled to survive and we hope that you're going okay. Um, and the other thing you mentioned too, yes, the, the pre-packaged gear has done really well. Keg sales not so great because venues closed down. Just so you know, a lot of us came up here uh, and picked up kegs. I didn't come into the venue to make sure that we didn't waste it. Yeah, so, yeah, no, there were a lot of people yeah. volunteering. I mean, we'd often open up the doors and there's people just with their mouths open. Just... Yeah, because otherwise that'd be alcohol abuse. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And we didn't want to have to pour it exactly. down a drain. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Christine Ballinger, hello and welcome. Christine, you're the first of our local Sunshine Coast producers to join us in the conversation. I think that deserves an applause from the audience. <laughs> We've not had an audience before and I work in radio, so I'm not used to any of this. So. I've got an audience at home with my kids and they boo me a lot. So I got called Boomer earlier today. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, but Christine, tell us about your, it's a local family business that you've got in Mapleton. 
Uh, it is. Uh, in fact, it's owned by my son and daughter-in-law who are here tonight. And they were wanting a place to escape from pretty much living inside an aeroplane, um, which no one does anymore, and, and travelling the world with their business and just wanted a retreat. So we found... What, of the fam one member of the family found a beautiful property next to Mapleton Falls National Park. And um, anyway, the suggestion was made, it should be a farm. And so all the family moved in with them. So they pretty much didn't get their retreat. And we're all there. And it's um, an organic farm. It's, but we actually approach our farming practice through regenerative um, farming. Yeah. It's amazing. And so it's your son and your daughter-in-law, is yeah, that's what you're saying? They, they own the property. And the whole family have moved in. So I reckon your daughter-in-law's here tonight. I'm very, very excited about that. Um, but it is. It's a great family business, isn't it? You're the farm manager. <laughs> right on, kid. Falls Farm. Is this, is this, this your is granddaughter? This is my granddaughter. Well, hello. Welcome. You're welcome to come on board. <laughs> You better go back to me. No, that's okay. <laughs> no. What's your granddaughter's name? This is Florence. Hi, Florence. How are you? It's good to see you. <laughs> oh, well, Flo, did you get called Flo? Where's mum and dad? Oh, is your, is your son the guy with a really good beard? There's two good I'm beards here tonight. I'm not quite sure. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is Florence, everybody. And now we're starting to work out who the actual farm manager is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but this is great. What's, what's the approach to your business in the beautiful, majestical area of the Sunshine Coast hinterland? Um, because of the, the beauty of the environment and the quality of the soil and the water... And because you have grandchildren, then our role is to be custodians of the land and to grow the best food that we can um, for our family and for other people's family and for the future. So that's why we do it. Yeah, yeah. it's excellent. Well, because you guys do regenerative, uh, regenerative. See, I told you I needed <laughs> one beer and just a six pack of nuggets. I think that's what Florence is okay. looking for. Um, there's some beautiful pizzas here tonight. So but what does it mean? The farming, yeah, tell us about regenerative Regenerative farming. means that you are part of a system. You're not isolated. This is your piece of land. This is where I grow my carrots and everything else I don't really care about. Regenerative means that you have to look after the water, the soil and the air and the, the environment around you. Um, and you've got to really focus on getting carbon into the ground because carbon um, stores lots more water, it takes it out of the atmosphere, it builds your nutrient profile, it builds this whole universe in the soil and grows really, really good nutrient-rich food. We eat it, we get healthier, and, it, and when, you know, coming to waste, we have no waste because everything goes back into the ground um, in compost systems or our gut. We don't t t till the ground, we leave the profile of the soil such that there's um, a whole ecology that lives there. So it's a different farming approach. We've planted thousands of trees. Um, yeah, but it's a system that you work with. Wow. And, and so you just do like a natural compost. Is that what you're saying? You don't go and till the land and then dump all the, the stuff we in? We go through, um, per year now, 25 tonnes of aged pulverised cow manure. Um, we have rock dust. Um, and we have what was called brown material, which is you know, leafy material. All of the um, garden material that is not used goes into composts. Um, so then we mix it all together and it goes back into our garden. So there is no waste. Wow, that's amazing. We know uh, when you're brewing beer, uh, you know, God's Lager, if you like, or the Amber Fluid which is, you know, the natural brew of the gods. Um, we know for a fact that there's quite often a fair bit of, of waste, Matty J from Brew Ha Ha, but with the spelt, the leftover spent spelt and all that yep. stuff, that is gifted to farmers, right? Is that how Correct. it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, mo most of us do something with it. Um, we, we're really lucky here. We, we basically send ours straight to Ken at Malini Wagyu. So he's just a few kilometres down the road. Um, so his animals are all finished on our spent grain. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, there's basically four ingredients in beer. You've got water, which makes up the large contingent of it. Um, so that's one of the main reasons we chose Mulaney as, as sort of the base of, of what we wanted to build. Uh, the water up here is just beautiful, as Christine mm. referenced, and, and farmers like her help us keep it that way. Um, so water is your major ingredient. So for anyone who's home brewing at home, 
be conscious of your water because back in the day before filtration, that was the main reason that, say, London made dark, meaty beers because they had dark, meaty water. Um, and then, you know, other places like Germany had this beautiful, clean, clear, crisp water, and that's why they made beautiful, clean, crisp beers. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Water's your major one. <laughs> Treat it seriously. Uh, second one is, is barley. So all of the sugar, all of the colour comes from barley. And once we extract that, basically the husk is, is a waste product to us. And it's quite a lot. I mean, every single week we go through about 500 kilos to two tonnes, depending on the week of production. Um, so we're lucky enough to be able to send that, like I said, just two kilometres down the road to Ken. He finishes his Milani Wagyu on it, and their marble score has gone, gone up infinitely uh, as a result of that. Uh, and then we buy those same animals back and we use nose to tail in the restaurant. So, yes, it is, it is a waste product, but it's certainly not wasted. No, and that's all about crafting that circular economy. And what you've touched on there too, I think is really important to note, everybody, uh, that we're talking about grains. So whether it's barley, you're talking about a wheat beer, yep. uh, there's hops involved. They're all plants. And therefore, what I'm trying to say to you is barley, hops, grains, wheat, they're all plants, therefore I think that beer is salad. And, and that means it must be good for you, right? Yeah. Especially ours, we have a lot of fruit and vegetables, uh, and even some yogurt. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. essentially a healthy diet. I love it. I, I can't wait to try Ken's uh, Mulaney Lager Brouhaha infused tea bones. I think that's gonna be amazing. Yeah, Ryan exactly. Hollis is with us as well. Uh, Ryan, of course, you're from Everfocus. You've been involved in a lot of big business. In fact, he's Quite a big deal himself. Uh, Ryan, tell us where you're from. You've come to the Sunshine Coast. You've got this business up and running. You've got an incredible pilot program ready to unleash on the Sunshine Coast and also has built an award-winning sustainable home, everybody. So thank you all. Well done. Uh, Ryan, what, what's your story, mate? Welcome. Thanks, Todd. Um, yeah, so I've uh, left the big business world to have a better life up here on the Sunshine Coast and we've built a house uh, on, on a hill near Montville. And um, I have sort of was trying to think how I can help the community be more sustainable and kind of give back the experience that I built up working in those businesses over my career. And one of the things that I've, I've sort of targeted is a new platform to help households learn how they can reduce their waste footprint and reuse and recycle more materials rather than sending it all to landfills. So I was one of those people that was probably motivated by the ABC's War on Waste series and yes. was shocked to find out that we only recycle about 50% of our materials, the rest go into landfill and it has a huge environmental impact. So um, I've sort of got some really smart people to help me build an app that uh, uses artificial intelligence and a few tricky things for people at home to take a photo of their material and it'll tell them what it is and what they can do with it. So get it in the right bin, recyclable hopefully. Um, and then beyond that, it's going to suggest how they can take an action next time to get something that's more circular in terms of material. And that way we can hopefully eliminate landfill and, and help businesses get new materials flowing around uh, their supply chains and they can become more resilient. As a community, we get the benefit environmentally, but also you know, being able to enjoy all of those business products that are local rather than um, you know, relying on things that are supplied on really long supply chains from across the globe. And as we've all seen in the pandemic, if those supply chains are disrupted, you can't get stuff. So it's fantastic that a circular economy, if we can create that, will help us locate stuff right here on the coast and we can have a much happier life. It's fair to say, because what you're talking about there is education too, Ryan Hollis. So, you know, I think the majority of us are aware, there's an awareness now, uh, we're alert, not alarmed, but there's an awareness and we're all trying to do the right thing. And I think I'm an environmental warrior and I'm doing the right thing and I'm raising four kids at the house in Warana and we're put it, trying to get the kids to put all the right stuff. My kids are more educated than I am at 45. Um, but you, what you're talking about is a full education and developing this system where people can go, that's going to go there, this is going to help there, you know, letting the people know exactly what's what. Yeah, and in a simple way, very easy to do, um, and you get to see the benefits. Hopefully we'll highlight the environmental impact that you're having as a, as a person in the community. So you get that reward. Um, and 
you know, you just grow a connection, I guess, between the community, because everyone in the trial that's helping me with this first phase is starting to talk together and learn about what they can do and what they can share amongst neighbours. Um, so it's really sort of getting the community to come together and, and have a sort of collaborative effort on, on reducing their footprint. And that's about crafting that circular economy. Christine Ballinger from Falls Farm, you are not just an artist and a lover of the land, but you are in fact an environmental scientist. Um, I'm a communications engineer. I just work on the radio, but that's a fancy <laughs> term. But you are genuinely a bona fide environmental scientist. You must just love what you do. Oh, I do. And um, actually, I, you know, there's a few other jobs I've had in that sort of, the, the other person that I was. And part of it was actually writing policy for government. Because I thought if you got into government and you could write policy, then you could cause a change. I was so wrong. <laughs> so wrong. Because then you met the... You and Peter Garrett. Yeah, yeah, you met yeah. the political beast. And... You know, you, you could have done all this work in community consultation and best practice and you know, benchmarking and whatever, then it gets to the political decision and your piece of work gets put on the shelf. So I realised policy was not the tool. Actually going out and doing it was what I needed to do. Hence, I quit the job and um, now my life is purposeful. I can start my day at 4.30 yeah, and I can finish way after dark and I can see, you can see my hands, what I've done. I've grown food for people and I'm, and, no, it's a team of people. We're improving the environment and that makes your life very rich. Wow. I, I think the other question I have, um, and I want you to answer this mm. as quickly and honestly as you can, is kale the work of the devil? No, no, no. Um, I want to know, like, how do people get involved with, with you guys? Like, you're obviously local producers, and as I said, the first yeah. we've had in this conversation, and we're stoked to have you here. How, how do people get a hold of, of your particular produce? Okay, so we primarily um, work straight to a chef. So, and those chefs were mainly in Brisbane, and, you know, we has some very, very good restaurants we supplied. The chefs came to us. We've done no marketing whatsoever. So through word of mouth, they've heard about this farmer, they've heard about the produce, they know that we, they place an order on Sunday, we pick it Monday, they have it Tuesday. So there is nobody that can do that. So our adage is we only sell what we grow, we are local, we are seasonal, and we are fresh, and we're organic growers. So the shelf life for a chef in Brisbane can be a couple of weeks for our produce because it hasn't done a road trip from Melbourne or been on a plane. Or it's, it's fresh. And, um, and the flavour is there because of the way we grow. So people come to, have come to us. So it's sort of like, you know, you sort of, I don't know, oh, there's someone over there. What are they doing? And they want to come and talk to you about what you're doing. And that's the best way. I, um, I've always found it fascinating, like 20 years ago I lived in tropical north Queensland in Cairns and we got to know a lot of lychee farmers and they would say, mate, you know the lychees you buy in the big supermarkets? They've been picked here in Cairns, they've been trucked down to Brisbane, they've then gone through the distribution yeah. warehouse, then they've been trucked back to say a Woolies or a Coles, mm. you know, or the other supermarkets, you know, and put on the shelves in Cairns and I never understood that. What you're saying is this is all about the crafting, the circular economy, what is growing here. Yes, it's going to go to Brisbane, but it's really not that far to go. But the local community and the Sunshine Coast community, mm. Noosa, Caloundra, Maroochydore, Mullaney, Mapleton, Flaxton, the list goes on, mm. are all frothing. I think that's the right phrase, isn't it, Matty J, <laughs> even if we're not talking about beers, but frothing for your fresh produce, and it's yeah. all local. And and we do we do retail as well. And COVID bought up and had we had to go to a new business plan when COVID came because a lot of our big restaurants closed. So, or or just you know their numbers, what they could see, all the rest of it. Um, so we set up a bigger retail distribution process, um, which has been really effective. And I think the thing that you know you talk about the circular economy, it's really about a closed loop process. We live within a system, and this is a is a closed loop. And I like to talk about the first law of thermodynamics, which is where energy and matter are constant 
in a system. You can't change the quantities of both, but you can change them. So what we need to look at, for me, is it is about the exchange. That's where we need to work. It's how we change energy and matter and get that efficiency. We're changing it into good things and we're keeping it within a closed system and it's within our sphere of influence. I can't do anything about what's happening in the United States, but I can do something about what's happening here in my little area. Well, apparently in the United States, they're working on a Big Mama's House 4 movie. So I think we could all do something and say no to that. I love Martin Lawrence, but really, we're done and dusted. Matty J, Brewhaha Brewery, and that's where we are tonight, everybody, our illustrious host uh, and the head brewer. Mate, can we talk about, when well, we touched very briefly on you guys doing loads of things with local producers, but what is it around this community that you guys have gotten involved in because all of the gear that people can come and order here and dine out on, all the little tasty, awesome morsels, are majority local. Can we talk beef, beer and bread with you, Matty J? Yeah, easy. And, and I'll even throw in some fruit and veg as well, <laughs> hey? Um, yeah, if you like... have to, but no kale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 oh, it's funny you should say that because I heard you say kale before and I'll never forget being at the farm with Christine and seeing real kale from, from a farm. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but what you get in the supermarket is nothing like fresh kale on the farm. Like the texture of the leaves, totally different. Um, like it's so, it just a, a completely different beast. And the asparagus, I remember picking them that, they're like a foot high. It's just, and, and actual trees, it's, it's such a different product. And I mean, that sort of ties back into, I guess, what you're asking, which is why do we do it? Um, I think it's a bit of a common theme with, with, with all of us here. We've, we've moved to the Sunshine Coast from somewhere else, you know, be far north Queensland, be it, you know, from your corporate world and from the stresses of it and, and Ryan I'm moving up to Montville. So I was the same. Um, we've all moved here for a, for a better life. Um, it's just, and, and I think we all talk about it, it's like the minute you come up here, it's almost like this weight comes off your shoulders. Uh, it's just, it's relaxing, the air is beautiful, it's just this really peaceful place. Um, so immediately moving up here, it was so obvious that we had to do that. Like it was not even a discussion about oh, how to, you know, should we do it, what's, what's the dollars and cents of it or anything like that. It was literally like, no, we have to keep it local. Um, beer is the same, there's no preservatives, there's no filtration, so it's, it's a natural product, it needs to be consumed fresh, it needs to be kept cold. And it, it's just this, to use the same words, that closed loop, that circular economy. It was always a question of we're doing it. And then it was kind of like this naivety around <laughs> how do we do it? Um, and for me coming in, obviously, I was, I was a brewer. Um, that's my background and an electrical engineer before that. So hospitality was, was so, so new to me. Um, and trying to learn all of that and, and I guess try and figure out how to source this produce locally and Obviously, there's so many advantages to sourcing it locally. It's, it's, it, it is a far superior product. And you're getting it, you know, the asparagus is a, is a foot tall rather than these stingy little shriveled things you buy in supermarkets. Um, it's so much, so much tastier. It's, it's so much better for you. And you know the person that you're buying it from. And that, that sort of exchange is, is brilliant. Like, Christine is not a stranger. We know Christine. I know Ben. I know the family. I know Florence. I saw her when she was just born. Um, can't believe she's three. I still can't believe that. I'm not sure that that mass checks out. <laughs> but um, they're farmers. They won't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the moral of the story is like it, it was so obvious we had to do it. But it comes with its challenges. Um, like seasonal produce is difficult because you can't have it every week. Um, so if you set a menu, especially in COVID times, you've you've got to laminate it. You've got to do all these sorts of things. And if that's changing every single week, it's really difficult to create a menu and to promise that to consumers week in, week out. So there are some difficulties. The other side of it is where we use a whole animal, and we do with Ken because that's the only option. He doesn't cut his animals up and sell them by the cut. So we use these animals. We have to use head, nose to tail. And that, again, is, is really, really difficult to not have a menu that's just beef, 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 seven different ways. So. Logistically, it was really tough to sort of figure out how to do it and how to use the mints in, in patties and you know things like that. But then also make dog food out of the real offal. Um, we have tongues, pizza specials. We do all sorts of things. Um, and we've had to evolve to that. Um, 
but we love it. We love that it's a farmer coming in, dropping off their produce, usually for about $15, $20. Like these are not big orders. Um, and the time that it takes me to actually process that invoice for $15 worth of bell peppers, um, and then you know, put that into the bookkeeping, go into the bank, pay that person, and then you, you see him walk back in the other door and just buy a beer with it anyway. So you're sort of like, I feel like this circular economy is maybe a little bit too close. So, um, it's a little bit too tight. Yeah, yeah. but this is great. And in, in COVID time, it, it was never more obvious mm. than that. Um, and, and even to go back before COVID, um, so the start of the year, obviously we had, we had drought, we had bushfires, we had all of these things. And, and Ken, again, to reference Ken, he, he came in at the start of the year with his, this is Mulaney Wagyu, uh, he came in, hat in hand, literally hat in hand, um, and said that the cost of feed's gone up so much he needed to increase the price of beef. Um, and again, getting back to that, it, it's, a, it's a pretty difficult thing to have all of the beef on your menu be Mulaney Wagyu, okay? Mm. So there's a reason people make beef patties out of cheap mints. Um, it's expensive, yeah? So to go up in cost, it was kind of like, oh. But the immediate reaction was, yeah, of course, let's do it and we'll figure out a way. Um, and we did, and he got through it. And then when COVID hit, he came in and he was the first person to come in um, and straight away say, oh, I'm now in a good position, you guys aren't, let's cut the price of beef right back so that you can continue to use it. So when we were closed and we couldn't sell to anyone and we were just doing home cooked meals, they were still made with Milani Wagyu beef um, throughout that entire process because we had that relationship to help each other when we, when we both really needed it. Well, and Matty J, that's the key I was going mm. to say because we talk about crafting a circular economy and looking after our local producers and local businesses, but it's, it's really, it's actually all about coming back to that old school interpersonal relationships, yeah. isn't it? And, 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 you know, the big fella came in and yep. he said, look, I can drop the price of beef now. And you said, yep. that's fine, mate. It's $23 for a schooner of beer, yeah. though. Um, <laughs> but which it, I would probably he, he, didn't, he didn't just say, I'll drop the price. He's like, I can make the price whatever you need it to be. Oh, Kenny. Yeah. A legend. And then he was sort of like, now let's go to the butcher and argue with him to get that down as well. <laughs> But, but like these, old school, these relationships you know, are like uh, throughout the whole thing. I mean, like a couple of years ago, we were, we, uh, not Christine and I, uh, but I was getting married and I had no venue. Um, it fell through at the last minute. And I reached out to the Falls Farm just saying, hey, is there any chance I can borrow it? Their venue was booked. And Christine, who I'd met a couple of times, offered up her own private residence for it. So like these, it's, it's crazy, but that's the community that we have up here. Um, and it's, it's a hell of a place to live. I actually, just on that, Christine, on a personal note, um, I'm not sure I'll get tickets to the AFL Grand Final at the Gabba. What, what are you doing at your private residence on October 24th? Yeah. And how big's your TV? Yeah. Can we, this is about no. the circular economy, Chris. Yeah. I'll bring some to her heart. Sorry, yeah. Christine. Yeah. Uh, look, I've got great kale. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll find somewhere else. You'll have to yeah. hooked up then. Um, I love the fact you're talking about footlong asparagus too, Matty J. It doesn't sound and as good as a footlong meatball sub. Honestly, it was, the, it was the same size. I'm not wow. kidding you. This, they grow. They're enormous. Yeah, and, that, well, and you do sell, you were saying, from Falls Farm, you do sell at the farm gate, which I think is people are more and more excited about because it's so fresh. Yes, um, we do have a farm gate and we also have an online ordering program for, for um, retail. Um, and we deliver here to Mulaney and we picked that up with COVID because we do know people who could not get out of their houses um, and wanted good food. So, look, I think we, we sort of pretty much give the delivery away and just to do those deliveries to get to people who, who couldn't get out. Um, and that's been um, really well received. So you are part of a community. You can't get away from that. Um, you have to embrace it. Sometimes it gets too close. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a good way to live. Excellent. And, and, and now more so than ever, people are looking at purchasing produce, no matter what it is, from their own backyard, right? You know, we're, we're still uh, saying the borders are closed. Even Scotty from marketing can't get into to Queensland at this stage. That's the Prime Minister, by the way, everybody. I think he's done a pretty good job with the marketing. Um, can we go back to you, Ryan Hollis? Mate, you've, you've won awards you, for building this sustainable home. What makes your home sustainable? And how can the rest of us have a crack at building sustainability, not only into our everyday lives, but into our houses? Uh, so firstly, I've got a big TV. 
you can come and watch the footy. <laughs> Sounds as great. As long as my team's in the grand yeah, final. Yeah, because the other lady's got kale, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. we won't worry about that. And now, are you running your big screen TV off solar? Yes. yes there yes. it is. No, it's a bicycle. You've got to pedal for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may get Christine to come to that one too. I may need some help. I'm built for comfort, not for speed. Yeah, um, so but yeah, right. It was a bit like um, what Christine talked about, her total system of a farm. We, we looked at building the house in the natural environment that of the block that we, we were lucky to find and really asked our builder and architect to fit it in and not change the environment at all. So um, we've got natural materials, recycled timber, we've got you know, our own power, our own water, our own sewage, all contained on site. But I think the biggest thing is that it fits naturally into that environment. Um, so we get you know, beautiful sun in winter that warms up the house. We don't need heating because it's fitted perfectly on the hill looking north and, and those sorts of things. So it's just a little bit of planning um, to use your environment and, and get materials that were hopefully local um, to sort of lower its footprint. But then when it's operating, we're not using anything to, to live. So we grow our own kale as well. Um, what is it with kale? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's literally, it was known as the war cabbage. Is it because cabbages were gone during World War II and they went, what else can we find in the ground that, oh, this horrible looking thing might be edible? And... The thing is, you've had too much supermarket kale. Yeah, Good I fresh kale yep. is really sweet. Very, very sweet. Is this a challenge, Christine? This is a challenge. Yeah. Is anybody in our studio audience tonight, as we broadcast here at Brewhaha Brewery and Restaurant, is anyone else prepared to take on Chris O's, well, can we call it Christine's Kale Challenge? Anyone? And we just lost 30% of the audience. Yes. <laughs> they, no, well, I think we were saying last time we did Crafting a Circular Economy, I believe the best way to cook kale is with a little bit of coconut oil, just in a wok, and that just makes the kale much easier to slide out of the wok and into the bin. Is that <laughs> now, I don't want this to be an anti-kale yeah. thing. Maybe I do need to try fresh, locally produced kale. Yes, possibly. Or kale, as some people have tried to call it in Russia. <laughs> um, guys, mm. the other thing I wanted to talk about really quickly with Matty Jakes, we've got some questions coming in. You can be following us, of course, uh, on the Circular Economy Sunshine Coast Facebook page. And just by giving us a like tonight, uh, at the end, you may win a $100 voucher to spend here at Brouhaha Brewery. Uh, the Sunshine Goes Business Women's Network Facebook page as well. And, of course, the Brouhaha Brewery Facebook page. So thanks for joining in, guys. We've got some quizzes to get to. What I wanted to ask, though, mate, is um, in here you might have noticed. Am I allowed to stand yeah. up, Carlos? Carlos is the uh, audio-visual guy. And so uh, I'm on a lead here. But what I love uh, is that you've got cardboard. And it's, but it's really, it's, I mean, it's awesome. It's not like it's cardboard that's going to get wet and fall apart. Tell us about this because this must be grouse for the environment. Yeah, uh, 100%. So um, for anyone who doesn't know what these are, um, they're recycled sugarcane pulp. Um, so they're fully home compostable. Um, so, you know, a world first. They're done by Biopack, who obviously do a lot of great stuff with that composting. Um, so we've adopted those as our pack rings. Uh, so we used to use a, like a recycled plastic um, but these are just so, so, so much better. Um, and again, the same thing, it, we just had to do it. Um, they don't look as good with Todd behind them, but... <laughs> <laughs> How many beers have you not had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Need to drink me pretty. Yeah. Um, they're amazing, mate. They're, they're really great, you know, and like I said, fully home compostable. So they're, you know, a really good movement. Um, and then there's lots of those things happening. They're a little bit more difficult to apply. They're obviously not quite as resilient because if you chuck them in an esky, after time, they do start to break down, but you know, of course, that's what they're made to do. So I always say, if you're putting beers in the esky, they're there to be drank, not uh, <laughs> lifted back Is up. They're not so, there for display. No. I mean, you need to break them up so ice gets between them. I mean, come on, we're Australian. Unless it's KB Lager, and then in which case that should always be just there for you display. You know what I'm, I'm fascinated that you don't like kale, but you love ale. You know what I mean? It's just that that, that K in front. I've never of it. thought about yeah. that. Kale is just ale with a K. Maybe we'll do a kale <laughs> ale. <laughs> <laughs> um, got a question for you, Christine. Thanks, Matty J. No um, and it's, again, it's Matty J not from The Bachelor, everybody. He had that show a while back. This is Matty J doing much more important things on Brewhaha Brewery. Christine, the value of creativity in circular economy, uh, thinking design systems. Can you tell us about that? I'm Huge. not sure who that question was from. <laughs> Melinda. I believe, Melinda. Yeah. Um, 
It is because it is a time to think outside the square. We'd be talking about circles, and I'm going to talk about <laughs> squares. <laughs> think outside a circle. Mind blowing. Um, yeah, it is um, because we have so many new challenges. Um, we've got climate change. We haven't even well, we sort of talked about climate change, but uh, and we've got COVID. Um, that's two biggins, and. So we need to think out of our existing paradigms and if you are a lateral thinker, you're just going to keep on thinking right down that road and the bushfires are going to continue. So you've got to hop out of that and use creative thinking um, and go into places where you've got to be brave because um, it might not work. So you've got to make that leap as well and hopefully it does come off. So I think in, and they're the changes, that's the new design systems, it's, it's um, I have an adage that, look, you learn to swim, jump in the deep end. You'll learn to swim. And that's the way we've got to be now. And you find that there's more support because a lot of people are still very, oh, I'd like to support and help and I want to do this local produce buying, and I, but I'm not sure about the environmental thing and I don't know what's fake news and what's not. And well, you then find that's more where, and more people getting look, on board? I, I come back to sphere of influence. What can I do to make a change? And no, I can't go and grow, you know, have a you know, 10 acre market garden using organic principles, but heck, I can do this little bit out in the backyard and you get some seedlings and you just start. And just by putting your hands in the soil, you'll start, to start what is this stuff? What really is soil, you know? And so you start to question. So your loop, while it's small, you started an education program that then will give you insight into those bigger systems and what people are talking about. You've just got to start. That's the big hurdle. Well, and that's the terrifying leap of faith. That's the isn't terrifying because you think you're going into a place, I've got to do it in a big way. You don't keep your sphere of inference really small. Oh, heck, I'm going to try and, try and grow my own carrots. That's a bloody good, because carrots aren't easy to grow. That's true. There you go. Yeah. You knew that, didn't you? Yes, I did. I did, in fact. We've had a couple of very dodgy batches at home, <laughs> and the sunflowers went really well, and then. Are they meant to not last for long or? What, I'll talk to you about that over a beer later on. <laughs> My daughter thinks I'm just a uh, well done boomer. You know, you've wrecked the, the garden again. Um, that is Christine Ballinger, everybody. Falls Farm. I'm going to make this call right now. The Sunshine Coast equivalent of Costa Georgiades from Gardening Australia. <laughs> Sands the beard though. I love Costa. I love everything. I'm six foot one. Yes, that's true. You Costa's can bench press only... him, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Costa's only this big. But it's no offence, Costa. It's the, we love you, Cosy. We really do. Um, but it's the, have you heard him sing? That's a Woodford Folk Festival thing. Um, but it's the same vibe, though, isn't it? It's just starting, not pushing the message, but for people who are coming to you, you're just sharing in your influence. Uh, look, and the thing is, you don't know what you don't know. So don't be afraid of all that stuff you don't know, because, heck, uh, there's heaps of stuff I didn't know when I started, and there's a lot more that I don't know, but I'm still going to give it a go because I think it's worthwhile. We love that. We love that about you, Christine. Question for Ryan uh, on the kind of support different people who can help businesses explore a more circular, sustainable approach. So what, what support is there? I mean, you've talked about this pilot program that you're working on, but what support is out there and, and what can people do? Um, so I think we're really lucky on the Sunshine Coast. We've got a very interesting mix of people in the community and businesses that have a really broad set of experiences, like just our set of experiences is totally different, but we're all here in the one little community. So we've got a huge uh, food and agricultural network fan, which most people would know about. You've got a lot of um, startup sort of centres that can help think outside the box. If you've mm. got a problem in your business, go to one of those entrepreneurial programs and, and ask them to think around something that's different. Uh, you've got a lot of um, mentors and volunteers on the Sunshine Coast that are, you know, sort of retired, have had a really interesting corporate background and they're willing to help other people. And then there's a lot of businesses um, that are out there helping people think about their sustainability and their design practices um, that you can tap into. They're all sort of spread up and down from Noosa all the way down to Caloundra. And then mm -hmm. I think the most important um, thing to realise is, as these guys have pointed out, relationships on the Sunshine Coast are so tight that you will just find help just by going and talking to different people in whichever part of your sort of 
um, community that you're in. So if you've got a little veggie garden and you just want to talk about making that better, go and talk to your neighbour. You might get some great ideas. If you've got a market garden, there'll be other people that can help you. So we're really lucky on the Sunshine Coast is I think most people are willing to collaborate and help. It's just ask the question. Um, if you need yeah, different kind of help, go and, and, and get a, um, you know, a, go and get the year 10 kids from Glasshouse Christian College yes. to do this, you know, their entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial program on your problem. Um, because they, they will blow your mind at the solutions that they can come up with. Um, so yeah, I think there's lots of different ways you can tap into it. Um, it just depends on your problem. And again, we circle back to relationships, about, yeah. about being you know, able to ask the local farmer or your, your neighbour. Question for Matty J from Brouhaha. Uh, Matt, things you are struggling to find solutions for. What would help a business like yours yep. in the, the current climate? Um, well, look, I mean, there's lots of things, isn't there? Besides we're, we're, $2 million. Yeah, geez, someone with one of those balls you shake and they tell you what, what's going to happen next month, that'd be really, really great. So if anyone, anyone has one of those, put your hand up. Um, no, look, I think that one thing that we do struggle with is, um, it is probably waste. I mean, we are, we are a restaurant um, and we are a brewery and we're not a purpose-built building. So those, those sorts of things, there's... There's lots of challenges there where we're, we're, we're quite young in our business growth and development and there's just so many great things happening. Um, so I mean, some more guidance and some more help around that, um, especially things that can be retrofitted. Like a lot of, a lot of people are doing some really great technology in brewing and, um, and, and farming and, and you know, energy recycling, all these sorts of things but it's often really difficult to retrofit them. Um, and, and one thing that is really hard here and we're, we're constantly trying to improve is, is our waste out of the place. Um, I mean, the plastic pack rings were a great example where we've made the jump to sugarcane pulp and we go through thousands of them, you know, thousands and thousands. Um, and, and finding a better product and working with them, the, the first ones they made were, were pretty crap um, and they kind of fell apart and then they had to actually cease production and then make a better product. So. Like things like that are so much better. Uh, there's so that becomes really another great... economy on its own too, doesn't Correct. it? Correct. Yeah. It's a business. It totally. Um, and, and you know, there's some really great closed loop like that is actually a waste management system called Closed Loop, which is really amazing. We'd love to get one. We've been looking at it for years, but we just can't afford it, and there's no funding for it, and it just breaks your heart putting all of that to landfill when you mm. can just be doing more with it. Um, and, and getting back to what Ryan said earlier about that education around recycling, I think we all think we're doing the right thing, but actually we're kind of like tarnishing that whole load by throwing in something that we get wrong. Um, and when you've got a staff of, you know, 20, 30, um, and it's young kids and older people, it's really hard to get that message across consistently. Um, and, and to, you know, just, I guess, just have that attention to detail always to make sure that that everything's happening. So yeah, look, I'd say that the thing we're trying to improve on always is, is waste. I think we're really good with, with sourcing all of our produce and things like that locally, and that's never gonna change. Um, but I'd love to get better at waste. Well, we've got a question here from River2 in our audience tonight. There is an audience, everybody! Yeah. Still with us. Uh, again for you, Matty J. How did you scale Brewhaha and create a sustainable brewery from nothing? Yeah, well, thanks for saying it's sustainable. <laughs> um, I'm going to take that both in the economic and the environmental sense. Well, I'm sustaining um, my enjoyment of drinking your beers. Yeah, no. Um, so think, there's sustainability there. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're sustainable. Um, and again, coming back to it, it's been such a difficult year um, and we're, we're pulling strong through this. So we've, we're dynamic, yeah? Like we're, we're one of the, I guess when COVID hit, we were one of the ones that were so fortunate because we could pivot in all these different directions. We had the restaurant staff, we had hospitality guys, we had the kitchen, we had the brewery, we had our own canning line, we had our own refrigerated truck and refrigerated trailer. So we could pivot and be able to, we're Mulaney, Uber Eats, that model was never gonna work and it wasn't our ethos, you know what I mean? Like we're, we're not made to just be quick fast food delivered. We love it, we use good produce. So we went the other route, which was home cooked meals that were amazing. Mulaney Wagyu, Malaysian beef curry, for instance, it gets delivered with cold beer in a refrigerated truck to your door and you then heat and eat that meal. Um, and, to, and to say that back again, that the COVID, when that hit, we had our own canning line. And to give you an idea, we, we had our own canning line for about two, uh, two and a half years before COVID hit. 
and we've done about 300,000 cans on it. Um, and since COVID, in the six months, we've done 300,000 cans on it. Yeah. So it's amazing how You're much we're You're welcome. I feel like a few people in yeah, this room yeah. have helped there. And so. then we just straight on a conveyor and straight to Todd. Um, so look, being diverse <laughs> is the strength of, of our business and why we can compete with the big guys because we can pivot a much faster than they can. Um, our cans are all labelled, so for the same reason. If you get a can, you can actually peel that label off. It's colour matched. And one more thing you'll probably notice, all the different size tanks behind us. Um, we're not a production brewery. That one big giant tank there is to make the big beers that we sell lots of volume on. And then the smaller ones tucked away in the corner are to make us diverse and make those more niche beers, I guess, that don't sell as quickly um, as some of those more consumable ones. It's amazing. I mean, your journey over the last four years has been incredible. And the way that you have been able to pivot, uh, like so many of our local craft brewers uh, and local producers during this pandemic and the crazy year that, again, we're calling Glen 2020, it's kudos to, to all of you guys. Um, someone in the room that I did mention earlier is Helen Andrews. Helen's here from Spare Harvest. Uh, you might want to get on board and have a look at Spare Harvest, a social enterprise that is a circular economy platform everybody. They're an online community whose members have a passion for living sustainably by food growing and gardening. Spare Harvest focuses on sharing, swapping, selling and sourcing what we already have. Helen Andrews, where are you Helen? Absolute ripper. Hello Helen, everybody give it up for Helen. <laughs> At home as well, if you're watching us on the couch, a bit of a golf clap for Helen. Spare Harvest everybody, please get around that. A um, couple more questions. We're going to go to you, Christine, and then I've got a video that I'd like to show before we wrap things up from our mate Macca, Cameron McKenzie. Um, actually, his business is pretty amazing. We'll get to that in just a second because he's got a few things he can offer the sunny coast from lockdown uh, down south. Um, this is a question from Nat Frost online. Uh, Christine, business, your business ethos is amazing. Uh, how do we engage others to adopt the same ethos? We've kind of just touched on that only a little bit, but what's the encouragement? Do people need to come out to Falls Farm and you go, this is how we do it. You know, you can do it in your backyard. It doesn't have to be a grand scale. Oh, dear me. Well, how do you do it? Um, do you start giving TED question. Talks online, maybe? Like? <laughs> Look, um... I've spent many years of my professional life in, in front of house, doing front of house things. And when I came to the farm, I just wanted to be left down the back paddock, you know, and, and be in my farm gear. You're not ready to be put out I know, yeah, I know. Um, I know you you know, so, more so here, but, but the, the thing is that there, we've got so much interest in people wanting to learn how to grow that we are looking at building an education program and making... Um, the farm accessible. Um, we do have sort of what we call an open door policy because we're not certified organic, but we have a peer review process. So you can come to the farm if you send us an email and we know you're coming, um, and we can show you what we do so that it's transparent. And, um, and pre-COVID, we were part of the curated plate, plate program. Yes which was huge. We had hundreds of people come to the farm on that particular program and you know, we we're going to be involved this year as well. So I think it's being transparent, it's being, um, what's the point of going to your grave with, with knowledge? It's, it's time for us to share our knowledge and to do that as effectively as we can. So I think as, as far as, we, love, we welcome volunteers, um, you go home with a big vegetable box of organic vegetables and that way you're part of a farming team and you get to know about the soil and our processes of no dig and, and, um, and how we grow our seedlings and all the rest. So just get your hands dirty. It's all about the education, isn't it? It is about education. It comes back to education and it's about being honest and, as I said, what's the point of um, trade secrets in this world now? Mm. Yeah. So you're saying the Colonel should give up the 11 secret Oh, look, he can have it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. Is that stuff's farm fresh? Yeah. Is that suable? No, it is. It's really lovely and I love it and it's one of my favourite. I mean, clearly. So, um, But no, I know what you're saying when it comes to getting out there and just doing a bit of your own backyard farming or trying to help well, craft a circular economy. Tread it like an Uber. Get into it. Well, there's also a, a number of what we call small plot farmers. Um, I don't think we can it, legally mention... No, 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 no. Plot, 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 plot. 
Oh, P-L-O-T. gotcha. Sorry, plot. Yeah, plot. plot farmers, plot. yes. Um, <laughs> Sustainable. <and laughs> in South East Queensland, and they're, they're local. They're peri-urban. They're, some one of them's in the middle of Brisbane. I think, mm. go and buy from them and go and talk to them because they are all around you. Excellent. I, uh, we're going to throw to a quick video. Thank you, Christy. Uh, Cameron McKenzie, you might remember from our last conversation in crafting a circular economy, Cameron McKenzie joined us. C-Mac, as they call him in the biz. No one does. It's just me. I'm an idiot. Uh, he's from Aspire. The best way to describe Aspire is it is literally Tinder for waste. Have a look at this. Hi to the team at Sunshine Coast Council. It was great to connect and share a bit about the Aspire program last month and I received a great sense of enthusiasm for the product, which is fantastic. We are thrilled to now to be able to announce we are working in partnership with Sunshine Coast Council, and we really want to encourage Sunshine Coast businesses to get on the platform. Sunshine Coast engaged us at Aspire in 2019, looking for an effective circular economy business to to support their businesses within the region for 2020 and for their on out. Sunshine Coast is the first council in Queensland, remember that, the first council to engage in the program on behalf of the businesses, community and the councils of the Sunshine Coast region. Businesses and community organisations, schools, anyone in the region are welcome to join. All you really need to do is Google Circular Economy Sunshine Coast Council for more information, register at the link there if you're a business or a school or whatever, and we'll be able to look at your waste streams and match them with interested other businesses that can actually take that to reduce your impact on global warming, as well as reduce the CO2 emissions, as well as reduce your induction to landfill. No worries, guys. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Mako. Cameron McKenzie from Aspire uh, with an update for us. We're just about to wrap things up on this Wednesday night. We're calling it date night in the month of September, everybody. Uh, we would love you to get on board and go to the, uh, the Living Smart website to find out more too about Aspire and, of course, creating and crafting a circular economy with the Sunshine Coast Council. Our guests tonight have been amazing. We do have one more question from the studio audience, and that is, Todd, can I have tickets to the AFL Grand Final <laughs> if you get them? Um, I tell you what, we're going to sell some, because I think this is from Bernie. Yep, and I think we're probably going to your place, aren't we, Ryan Hollis? <laughs> so I'll get you tickets to Rise's place, mate. It's a sustainable living home here in the beautiful, majestical Sunshine Coast hinterland, and they're $390 a ticket, Bern, <laughs> or two for two grand. So, but we'll work that out. Thanks so much for being part of it, everybody. It's time to make a change, and you can be part of that. Hopefully, if you're joining us for the first time, we've answered some of your questions on crafting a circular economy, what it's all about. Our guest tonight, Maddie J, of course, from Brouhaha. Let's give it up with our live studio audience. Christine Ballinger, of course, from Falls Farm. And the one and only from Everfocus, our mate Ryan Hollis, everyone. Oh, and by the way, someone who went online and uh, liked our Facebook page is Kate Jackson. Well done, KJ. Jacko. Uh-huh. Uh, she's actually yeah. here and just did it. Yeah. Yeah. Smartphone thing. I still say we're living in a day and age of smartphones and stupid people, but not Kate, because she's won $100 voucher here to Brew Ha Ha, which is fantastic. After I take my cut, Kate, you've got 20 bucks. So, no, but well done. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks to the White House Celebrations team, uh, to Carlos and Mrs. Carlos and everybody, and to Maddie J and Toby and all the guys here at Brew Ha Ha Brewery in Mullaney. Do yourself a favour, as Molly Meldrum would always say on a Saturday night on Hey Hey Saturday. Do yourself a favour. Get in the car this weekend. Venture up the beautiful range and check out, as I keep calling it, the majestical Sunshine Coast hinterland and this amazing town of Mullaney. Get to the farm gate at Falls Farm. Not on October 24, because we're still negotiating the GF. (laughs) At your place. <laughs> Otherwise, it could be at Ryan Hollis's. Kale chips. Kale I'll chips. Kale Definitely chips. at Ryan Hollis's, yes. everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for being with us, everybody, here at Bruha, our first studio audience ever that's live. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we mentioned everything. Thanks to our good friends at the Sunshine Coast Council and to Sharon. It's her brainchild. Uh, of course, it's her initiative. We call her Shazza in the industry. So well done. Thank you for joining us for Crafting a Circular Economy. October 21 is the next time we'll meet and we're going to be live from the top of Mount Coulomb. That hasn't been ticked off yet. Live from the, from the back of a jet ski. I could be riding an elephant. I don't know. Are we out? Are we done? Have yourselves a great Wednesday night and we'll see you again soon as we continue to craft a Sunshine Coast economy.